Okay, so Mendel figured out that essentially somehow there have to be discrete things in these pea plants that actually separate or segregate during baby making and that then are recombined during fertilization. So the law of segregation states that something separates or segregates during baby formation. And let's look at that. We can actually make sense of that idea because essentially we can make sense of it. Um, we can make sense of the idea because we understand the genotypes of these uh, plants. So we know that the white phenotype is coded for by recessive alleles, and in order to express the white phenotype, we have to have two copies of the, the recessive allele. We also know that in a true breeding plant, it has to be homozygous. No matter what happens, we have to end up with the same phenotype. So that it has to be true breeding. Now, take a look at um, the dominant purple. This also has to be true breeding. It has to be homozygous. This time it has to be homozygous dominant. Now, tell me, just take a wild guess, what do you think is true about the genotype of the F1 generation babies? These babies are going to be heterozygous, and that's the idea of segregation. These Alleles divide, meiosis, and make gametes, and then recombine fertilization to make a, a diploid organism again. That's the law of segregation. The place where you actually see this in action is when we segregate a heterozygous genotype. And then we see, we're going to defend this, we're going to actually do the Punnett square to show us this, then we're going to see the actual 3 to 1 uh, genotypic or phenotypic ratio. Before moving on, I, we're going to do a quick review of the concept of independent assortment. And then we're going to look at a Punnett square and hopefully convince ourselves that, yeah, independent assortment and segregation are part of being able to interpret our babies. Who's out there? What babies are going to come out of this possible soup 